Alrighty, well, morning everybody, and cast time once again. And then, um, let me go ahead and intro this real fast. Uh, this is gonna be a Parker, um, uh, their E Machines album. I think it it came out today or yesterday. So, brand spanking new. So, let me go ahead and uh, get this fired up. And then, um, this is gonna be a, a fairly intricate cast here. So, there's like a bunch of moving parts and stuff, so don't be surprised if I make a few mistakes here and there. But I do have a fair amount I need to cover. It's um why I'm doing this fairly early. Uh, it's it's 11:07 p.m. right now. Normally I like to do these around midnight. So, but like I said, I gotta I'm doing this an hour early, just because um like I said I got a I got a fair amount to do so. So for the so um, I decided to go ahead and stream some pinball. Um, it's a new week, so uh, some new matchup league tables and stuff like that. So wanted to go ahead and get those taken care of. But um, overall, FX3 it it went okay. Um, tables are a bit tables a bit on tables are a bit on the tough side. So I. This might may this might take uh, repeated attempts to be to keep from being knocked down a tier. So so gonna have to put in a little bit of work to keep my place. Um. Okay, just checking something here real quick. Okay, but um and then the uh, the tournaments, kind of the same thing too. They they were just merely okay. I just extremely average. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. They're extremely average. Just I think I won one tournament, and then it, I was pretty much all over play, all over the place, and all the other ones. Hmm, seems I'm having trouble with English right now. Anyway, so just like I'd I'd rank high in some, rank low in others. Um do like middle of the pack and other tournaments as well so uh, pinball arcade more of the same just mid tier um, nothing to really write home about I think I got a I barely made the top five high scores in one of the tables I can't remember which one so but like I said overall it was just a bleh session like just Really white bread vanilla type type pinball. Um, but uh, a little bit later on, a little bit later on though, I decided to go ahead and fire up some Killer Instinct. Uh, just just uh, off stream, and then um, just I just played some uh, just did some random battles with random characters. Um, one that came up eventually was a guy named General Ram. I just took a look at him and I'm like holy shit this guy's got two command throws most uh, uh most other characters only have one normal throw and any other characters that are classified as grapplers only have one extra command throw this guy's got two like holy shit um looked him up and found out I was right this guy's a hardcore grappler and plus uh I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with him but he's kind of like a kind of like Fang or Fong, or however you pronounce his name from Street Fighter V. He also deals damage over time as well. Um. But yeah. Close to range pressure, just like a grappler. And you're slowly in, you're slowly slowly cornering your prey, cause uh he's he's a I mean He's not a very mobile, not a very mobile character, and even says so right here. At least mobile character in the game. Um, he's about, he's pretty much vanilla as far as uh, as far as agility goes, like jumping, jumping and stuff. So yeah, he's he's pretty much a tank. He's a slow mover, and um, he's also the kind of player that if you manage to knock your opponent down, you pretty much have to stay on him. It isn't like like um, zoners, where 
you know, the moment you knock your opponent down, you want to get the hell out of dodge so he can't counterattack you. You're trying to fight him from a distance. And... Yup. Like I said, he's a tank, he's a grappler. He's kind of like, um, Agonos. If you've, if you've guys seen any of my other cast videos, or my more recent ones, I played him for a while. He's a big, humongous, humongous rock golem, kind of like Rook from Fantasy Strike. But he's another slow mover. Like I said, that guy's another tank. But General Ram, same thing. Um, and he also has armor, but he kind of, he kind of has his own. And then, um, you can, uh, you can put a Krill Swarm on them. And it'll, uh, give, it'll deal damage over time. But, so I've got this up. So, I'm hoping this works. Um, I know the screen was flickering while I was playing it. I don't know how bad it's going to be now, but before I continue, I'm just going to go ahead and unplug the controller so I don't get the, please reconnect controller, pop up. So, um, one thing I do like about him is, is all of his motion inputs. Down, forward, punch. Down, forward, back, punch. Down, back, kick. Down, forward, kick. There's no charge moves. There's no uppercut motion. Um, and then he has a Hold down all three punch buttons and it'll put a shield up. Actually. And one of the reasons why I picked him is uh, one of his colors is purple and gold. The same colors as the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, I mean, I don't, I haven't watched football in many, many years, but I mean, I'm a native Minnesotan, so yeah, that's my team. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a drink of some Arizona green tea real fast. And then, um, I'm going to go down here. Okay, dummy options, practice options. No. So, regenerate health. So, down forward, uh, light punch. Medium. Heavy. Then you have down back punch. Down back punch are the throws. The, the light one throws him a little bit at a distance. Adds a, adds a stomp to that. Down back heavy punch. Does even more hits and damage. Then you have down back kick. And as you can see by his health, the damage over time. Damn, that stays on a while. And then down back medium kick. And it looks like the damage over time can't actually kill him, so... That's right, it should pop back up. Ready. Fight. And then, I think it was down forward, heavy kick. So, it looks like this one here, I think it's an anti-air attack. So that's a low, okay, I see how this works. Down forward light kick is a low attack. It hits low. Down forward medium kick, it hits mid. Down forward heavy kick, it hits high. And I think it could also be used as an anti-air. In fact, let's um. Looks like you can use it as an anti-air, too. Yeah, there it goes. 
dealing that damage over time. So, then. And um, his other ability, and I believe him, you can see the little black X's floating around him. That's his armor. That um, I think it absorbs one. I think it absorbs uh one hit or a bunch of projectiles. Uh, the manual didn't say. So, so you can go. And you can see there. So I'll just go ahead and knock him down. That'll refresh. So, but like as you can tell though, one he's a big guy, so that makes him a big target. And like I said, as far as mobility goes, that's it's pretty slow lumbering, just like old Zangief. As far as jumping, he doesn't have anything special. Looks like there's some distance on there too. So it looks like if I go down back light kick. Yeah. So this is the closest thing I have to a gap closer. Although I don't know. Oh, I forgot about this too. If your opponent's down, you can stomp on him. You can do that repeatedly. So it looks. Let's try that again. Sweep them. Alright, so. Alright, we'll go ahead and just reset that. So again, oh, I, oh, I forgot about this too. Um, as far as jumping, as far as jumping in attacks, actually, his best one is actually his uh, fierce punch. Cause uh, if you look. Because this attack, it, it, the the dagger he uses, he doesn't just stick it out in front of him. He puts it underneath them, so you can do cross-ups with this. For those that don't know, well, I'll show you. A cross-up is where, if you see what I'm doing, jumping right over him. See that? See that? It it looks like this attack shouldn't even connect, but it actually does. See? See that? So, this this actually confuses your opponent because he doesn't know which way to block. Or he could just drop it right on top of him. But like I said, he this can cause a lot of confusion. That's one of my nasty habits right there. I'm accident. What you saw at that moment, 
I accidentally hit a circle and triangle at the same time. Now, he he does have a normal throw like everybody else. You just walk up and hit a right punch and light kick. Looks like, oh, I forgot about this, too. That quick kick he has, I believe it hits low. So he can go. So. Yeah, it hits low. I believe uh, Zangief has something like this, too. So as long as you're holding forward, I have a uh, combo assist turned on. So. There's the Ultra. Okay, so. Okay, so. I just wanted to show that. So let me go ahead and, um. I already went on a little too long on that. So I'm going to work on... Uh, I'm going to shut down Killer Instinct. And I have no cursor, so... All right, I'm doing this in the background. Okay, so exiting out of the game... But, um, but he's, um, but I like, I kind of like that character, and I'll probably play him more, but, um, I'm still going to be doing random select. Like, if I ever stream Killer Instinct again, I'll still be doing that as well. Just going on, um, just doing, like, single, you know, player versus CPU battles, just, uh, randomly picking a character and randomly picking an opponent. But, um, otherwise, I did play Ramp for a while. Yeah, I just played here for a while. Um, I did a, I did what's called survival mode. Um, you just defeat as many opponents as possible until you're defeated yourself. So. Um. But I do definitely need to move along. Um, one other thing I did. Oh, I, let me rewind back a little bit. I did play some Gems of War, but uh, I only played it for about 10, 15 minutes, so not very long. Just a few PvP battles, and it just called it good. Um, but one thing that did happen yesterday, um, right after I finished my cast video, oh, excuse me, one of my uh, YouTube recommendations um, showed a documentary about this writer, poet, excuse me, named uh, Charles Bukowski. Um, I've heard the name tossed around here and there. Never really gave it much thought. Um, just... I, like, like I said, I don't... Like... I think probably because... Because of my... Uh, oh, how can I explain this? Because I'm more of an outsider. And I don't really pay attention to pop culture stuff. And they probably... And couple that with the fact that... I have heard the name Charles Bukowski uh, being mentioned, at least subconsciously, uh, too many times. At some point, I heard the name so much that I didn't really care to look into him. I, I also want to say that there was a... I want to say he did a... He wrote a book called Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Um, Monty Python legend uh, Terry Gilliam did a movie about that. I think he did it, or I think it was uh, Bukowski that did that book. I might be wrong, but I, I had that in the, I had that in the back of my head, or in the back of my mind, excuse me. So I didn't, again, didn't really, didn't really think much of it after that. Well, 
well, I figured, you know, since since this documentary came up and didn't really whole, have a whole lot else to do, thought I'd give it a watch. He's a pretty interesting guy. I mean, um, he's a writer and a poet, and he he smokes, he drinks, or while he was alive, um, he was a victim of child abuse. Um, his dad also beat he beat his mom as well, as well as him. Um, and he was he was a smoker or heavy smoker. He was an alcoholic. Um, I think he did a lot of drugs as well. Uh, he and I think I guess I'm jumbling my words right now. Um, but I guess unlike a lot of other poets, you know, they're up in their ivory tower or whatnot. He's um he's had regular jobs for many many years. Like he, I think he worked in the post office for like 11 years or something like that. But he's He's had just about every job you could imagine. He's kind of like um, kind of like stand-up comedian um, Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz is like that too. Like he's had a ton of normal jobs before he did comedy full time. And I gotta look at something real quick. Okay. Thought the album might have been over. No, but no. Um, old Chuck. He's pretty much done it all. He's pretty much done all the low-income jobs that are out there. And on top of that, he's also a misanthropist. But I mean, when you you know when you work in retail, or when you work a bunch of low-income jobs like that, you're you're gonna develop a pretty bad attitude towards people. So, but no, I'm gonna take another drink here. Um, but I also got to thinking the more I watch this documentary, he kind of remi- he kind of reminds me of a uh, singer Tom Waits. I looked at um, I actually looked at a little bit of his poetry, or from what I saw on the um on that documentary, he's like I said, he's kind of like Tom Waits. They're both they're both pretty dark. Um, oh Henry Rollins as well. And I don't like using this word much because it's thrown around so damn much. But they're kind of gritty. They're kind of dark gritty. Um, yeah, that's the only words I can come up with right now. But but yeah, there's no no real flights of fancy with these guys. I mean, it's just total total concrete. Like they don't they don't mince words or anything. So, but like I said, as I was watching this documentary, they're Waits and uh, Rollins were were coming to mind as I was watching this, so I'm guessing uh, Bukowski was like the granddaddy of them all. Um, in fact, I went ahead and did this. I pulled up some of his poetry, and I'll I'll go. I just um I just grabbed my poetic side. It was like the first thing that came up on um uh, on Google on my Google search. Uh, looked at it. Just, I think it goes alphabetically. Person was. 16 bit Intel 8088 chip, like with an Apple Macintosh. Yep, with an Apple Macintosh, you can't run Radio Shack programs in its disk drive. No compatibility, yep. Nor can a Commodore 64, or nor can a Commodore 64 drive read a file you have created on an IBM personal computer. This is, I'm guessing this was written years before the PlayStation 2 came out. It's uh, backwards compatible. Both K-Pro and Osborne computers use the CPM operating system, but can't read each other's handwriting for the format just in different ways. Yup. The Tandy 2000 runs MS-DOS, but can't use most programs produced for the IBM personal computer unless certain bits and bytes are altered. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, it's like uh, it's like tools. There's there's American and there's metric. But the wind still blows over Savannah and the spring, and in the spring the turkey buzzard struts and flaunts before his hens. So I'm guessing he's uh he's probably explaining why he doesn't like computers, or why he's uh he favors nature over computers because they're predictable, more consistent. Let's try another. 40,000. At the track today, Father's Day, 
Each paid admission was entitled to a wallet, and each contained a little surprise. Most of the men seemed between 30 and 55, going to fat. Many of them in walking shorts. They had gone stale on life, flattened out. In fact, they aren't even worth writing about. I can see that. Why am I doing this? These don't even deserve a deathbed, these little walking whales. Oh, damn. Which, um, which is almost hypocritical because, uh, in a lot of the, in a lot of the, in a lot of the footage of him in the documentaries, he's pretty chubby. He, I mean, he's, he's got a big old belly himself. Only there are so, there are so many of them in the urinals and the food lines. They have managed to survive in the most limited sense. But when you see, looks like a long one. So many of them like that. They are not there, breathing, farting, commenting, waiting for a thunder that will not arrive. Yeah, um, this is going to be one of those, uh, probably better off just reading on my own, rather than trying to recite it here. And, um, and this also kills another idea I had. Um, I was actually thinking of doing a stream of, uh, just reading, reading off some of this, uh, poetry here. But, like I said, it's, it's, it's very hard for me to do. Reading aloud is something I'm very horrible at. I think stuff like this is probably better read than said. So. Um, but otherwise, um, that's going to do it. I believe I've said all the things I wanted to say today, so I'll just call it good here. Um, but thanks for tuning in and listening to me, though, everybody. I appreciate that. And, um... Oh, and uh, I am off tomorrow, so I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow then. So, But once again, um, this coming Saturday, um, I, there, I shouldn't be, sh or there won't, there probably won't be a stream on Saturday because a good chunk of the afternoon, I'll be, um, I'll be at my, um, my nephew's graduation and I guess it's also his birthday as well, so. So, but. Until then, though, everybody, thanks again for coming by, and see you all next time. Bye for now.